Hi everyone, Gavin Wolpert here. Hope you've enjoyed your week off from our, our classes and hope you're all ready to get going again in August. Uh, I decided to try something different today with my mailer. I decided to record a video for you. I've been playing all week in the North American online knockout teams, uh, which kind of replaced the nationals. Uh, it was supposed to be this a big tournament in Montreal this week, but it wasn't. It, wasn't to be obviously with the virus. So we've been playing online. Uh, unfortunately, I lost yesterday in the semifinals, but uh, it was a really fun run. And I wanted to take you, I have a few hands, but this is the one I'm gonna go through today. I wanted to try and see if maybe you'd find this interesting. I don't know whether whether this, this isn't intermediate content and most of it, it isn't the content that's made for most of your level, but I thought it might be interesting for you to see what it, my life is like when I'm playing in these major bridge tournaments. And I had a really a couple really nice hands that I thought I'd go through. Uh, so I'm gonna start you with this one right here. Uh, you can see here that I have a 20 point hand, six spades and four clubs. Uh, whenever I have a hand type like this, it's always a decision to make of whether to open two clubs or whether to open one spade. Uh, there's two things that I go through when I'm making that decision. Uh, the first one is, is if I open two clubs, is the auction going to be easy? If you watch our Wednesday morning tournament on, on YouTube, a couple weeks ago, we had a hand where we were going to have to, uh, we had a hand with diamonds, where it was going to start two clubs, two diamonds, three diamonds. And that auction is a very uncomfortable auction because there's not a lot of room for partner to bid their hand or kind of wait for us to bid our hand. It uses up a lot of bidding. When I have spades like this hand, it actually spades bids a lot cleaner when you open two clubs because we can go two clubs, two diamonds from partner, two spades. And now the hand is still low enough that partner can, can, has the whole, can bid any suit naturally at the three level. They could bid no trumps, they could raise us. It's a nice comfortable auction. So that's my starting point is that when, when I'm thinking if I have a spade suit or a heart suit, I'm much more likely to be willing to upgrade to open two clubs. But then I'm not doing it just for the sake of it. The reason I would be opening two clubs more aggressively is because I'm afraid to open one spade. And if I open one spade, am I going to miss game? Are there hands that my partner can have that they, where they're going to pass one spade where we're going to be making game? So with this hand, I'm looking at it and I can see that I don't have very many losers. Even if partner has a, a pretty much zero, I could still make a game. If partner has a spade fit for me, that's one, even with zero points, you can see that I, I might lose no spades and just lose those three sixes, the six of hearts, the six of diamonds, and the six of clubs. And the six of clubs may not be a loser because if partner's got four of them, then we're gonna go ace, king, queen, and the six of clubs will probably be good. And if partner's got three of them, then the six of clubs could be good. And if the partner's got only two clubs, we surely will be able to rough the six of clubs in their hand. So I don't need high cards to make game from my partner. That is a, an indicator that I, 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 I kind of want to upgrade this hand to open two clubs. I, I got to be honest, if, if my suits were different and I had six diamonds and four, four clubs, even not even reverse, if I had six diamonds and four clubs, I would be way less likely to start with two clubs, two diamonds, three diamonds because I would not feel like I was going to get a, a, enough of an opportunity to cleanly bid out my whole hand. All right. So I opened two clubs and, uh, and I went past two diamonds and then something strange happened. They doubled. Uh, important not to get phased uh, you know, you know, phase is that the right word for the spot for by their double like don't let it really affect you you should process what it means that double is telling their partner i've got diamonds it's not a takeout double we don't take out double into uh for starters when they make an artificial bid like two diamonds two diamonds didn't show diamonds for one thing that makes the double diamonds uh but also it would be very weird to be making a takeout double into our strong auction. That's not something you wanna be doing very often. Okay, so their double showed, said that they wanna lead their partner to lead diamonds. Fine, let's keep that in the back of our mind. They probably have king, queen of diamonds or king, jack of diamonds or something like that. Or maybe they have queen, jack, 10, nine, seven, that I, who knows what they have. Not gonna overthink it. Uh, our next bid is two spades. Pretty, pretty straightforward. That's the bid that we were gonna be making. Uh, now partner responded to no Trump, which, very happy to see that left us room to do a lot of things to, to, to make our, our appropriate decision. We have two choices for how to proceed with our next call of our hand. We already showed partner five spades. So now we can either show partner our club suit or we can show partner our sixth spade. So what I was thinking at this time is 
I actually see that now that partner doesn't have many spades, if partner has a club fit for me, we could make a lot of tricks in clubs because we can trump my spades and my spades will be good. So you can see that clubs could easily be a good contract. So I felt like it was worthwhile to bid clubs first. I can always get back to bidding my spades again in my next turn and I will, that's gonna be my plan. Uh, so I, I bid three clubs, my partner bid four clubs, which was music to my ears. Okay, that was what I was hoping for. So now I know m much more about this hand. I know that my partner does not have a spade fit for me. So they have one or two spades. That means that we have no spade losers in clubs. So now all I really need to make, to make a slam is I need a partner to either have the ace of hearts or the king of diamonds. Now the, the double over here, actually now we're coming back to it, doesn't sound like partner has the king of diamonds. Uh, so I don't, I, but I, it is entirely possible that partner's got the ace of hearts. So this is where I'm going to show you the tool that I use, but this is not something that you should play. I don't even think this is something you should think about playing. I just think it's cool and you should kind of see what, what, what we experts have at our disposal for hands like this. So the agreement that my partner and I have is that when we have a minor suit fit, we play that bidding this, the bid that's directly above four of our minor is asking for key cards. So normally what I would wanna do is I'd wanna ask my partner for aces and that would be four no trump for you guys. Uh, and four no trump, if you're playing in five clubs is zero and five diamonds is one, that would be just fine. But if you're playing the other way around and if you're playing five, 14, 30, where a partner would have to bid five diamonds with zero aces, you, you could be in trouble. Uh, so, uh, this is uh, just a, a bonus uh, that I, I don't have to worry about that problem with my, my expert partner. I, I can bid four diamonds key cards. So that's what I did. I bid four diamonds asking for key cards and my partner responded. F he responded four spades. I, I, I mistyped it in here, uh, but we'll just call it four hearts because my partner showed me one key card, one key card. So now I found out my partner has the ace of hearts. That was exactly what I wanted to hear. So should I bid six clubs? Not yet. There's still a chance that we could make seven. I can see that we have no spade losers. I can see that we have no heart losers. We have this diamond loser, but if partner has either the king of diamonds or the king of hearts, we will be able to get rid of that diamond. So now I decide, okay, well, I don't wanna give up on Grand Slam just yet. So now I bid our, my next systemic bid, which is five diamonds uh, saying, do we have all the key cards? Kind of like your old school five no trump. I bid five diamonds asking for kings, specific kings. And now my partner told me they have the king of hearts. So this hand played out super cleanly for me. So now I know my partner has a club fit has shortness in spades. Well, shortness meaning they don't have three. The reason I know they don't have three, they did, they had, when I bid two spades, they would have supported me. So I know they only have two, one or zero spades. So, and, and I know they have the ace king of hearts to throw away my diamond. So I know I'm gonna be able to, I can play this hand out before I even see dummy. I'm gonna be able to go ace of spades and I'm gonna rough a spade. And then I'm gonna come back and draw a trump and, but then I might rough one more spade. Hopefully partner will have the jack of clubs and then there won't even be a risk of it getting over rough. And that's how I plan on making seven clubs. So that was my next bid over five hearts. I bid seven clubs and take a look at what partner had and it worked out just, it was just exactly what I, what I needed. Uh, as, as I said, we had the ace king of hearts to throw away my diamond. I was able to draw trumps and uh, rough the spades and dummies. So I didn't lose any spades. I could play ace of spades, king of spades and rough the spade with the jack of clubs. And then I, and then my hand was good for making seven clubs. So that was a really fun hand. We won 13 imps because at the other table, they only opened one spade with the hand and, and that caused them some complications for getting to the grand slam. Uh, thought it was a fun, nice hand for you to see. And now I just wanna take a minute to talk about the three series in August that we've got going on. For all of the series I'm about to talk to you about, the links to register are at learnbridge.nyc, www.learnbridge.nyc. First is my mom's class. So my mom and I work really hard to build these lessons together, but my mom delivers the, the, the Tuesday class, uh, the basics with Hazel, which people who are taking the class love the class. This month she's doing week two bids and three level preempts on, on the fourth. 
the sh strong two club opening, which was the hand that we just talked about. Don't think you're going to be getting into the fancy key cards. This is the fundamentals. This is for players who have just learned or people who want refreshers of the, uh, on the fundamentals. Um, and August 18th, she'll deal with all the different openers balance hands because after the two club opener, we're going to have learned, you're going to have learned all of the different ranges, what to do with 12 to 14, what to do with 15 to 17, what to do with 18, 19. She's going to go through all of those and, and make sure that you understand when we play our stamen systems and when we don't and all that stuff. So that is the, the, the basics with Hazel for August. Uh, so the second class that my mom and I work, work together on is, is our, our Friday's Walpert's on competitive bidding. So uh, this, these three subjects are all great subjects. The first one is redoubles. There's so many different redoubles. People uh, don't really understand how redoubles work. Like why do we redouble a club double redouble to show 10 points? We're going to talk about that, how to follow up after that. And different redoubles. I have a big th saying or thought in my mind that redoubles are always the opposite of what the double is. So if they're doubling us for penalty, redouble says take out. And if they're doubling us for takeout, redouble says penalty. And, and that's kind of the, the mentality that we're going to be teaching, but there, there's a lot to, a lot to cover. As usual, we're going to be finding places that people make common mistakes. One of them I know is that people redouble when they have a fit for partner, thinking that that's, that, that, that they're good to go and that they're showing it, but they aren't, they aren't, and, and we're going to get into why it can work out badly and how I exploit that problem that people have. Uh, the next thing is all about cubids. Uh, we all learn about cubiding to the opponent's suits to show a fit, uh, but we... Uh, we start to there's there's some qubits that don't mean that and 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 we're gonna get it we're gonna get into the logic of why and when and what the different types of qubits we know Michael's qubits and we know how to qubit to show a fit but then there's some auctions where we're qubiting it doesn't mean anything like that it doesn't show a fit and it doesn't show Michael's it just says I've got a good hand and we're gonna talk about why and when that is and it's actually simpler than it sounds uh, it's just a matter of understanding the context of the auction. And finally, August 21st, we're dealing with overcalls. So we, we're not just going to be basically talking about negative doubles. We're going to be talking a lot about uh, auctions that, that we see a lot of problems with where, where, where we open and they overcall. And sometimes we make a two over one in competition, which shows 10 or more points. And just how to follow up, how to make sure we're in game. And we'll tie in some of the cubids from August 14th into the August 21st lesson. These are all really important subjects. Highly recommend it. Again, you can sign up on learnbridge.nyc. And finally, this month, the master series that I started last month on 2 over 1, uh, this month, we're, I'm going to take you through uh, the, the response structure that I play with my partners uh, over One No Trump. Uh, basically, it's going to talk about uh, modern four-way transfers and how I follow through with Stamen and all my three-level bids over One No Trump. I'm just going to go through what I play with pretty much every single person I play with. Nothing too complicated, but uh, it is advanced. For sure, it's advanced. A lot of the stuff is advanced. I'm going to go into transferring to a minor and bidding a major, what that means. Lots of stuff on the, in this class that are very worthwhile. Uh, and then April 18th, two weeks later. So this class is only two classes this series this month. I decided to take it down a notch. I've been overdoing it. And so I'm trying to take it easy. Uh, reverses on August 18th. Uh, I'm going to talk to you ab about what's required for reverses, but more importantly, how to bid after reverses. We, we, it's easy to get through the first step of, of understanding you need 17 or more points to reverse, but then understanding how to slow the auction down, how to explore slam, what, what, when three no Trump is going to be right, how to just deal with everything. We're going to go through reverses, start to finish. Uh, it's advanced. This is all advanced stuff. Uh, take the class at your own risk, but I, I, I feel like most people can learn a lot from this class. Uh, it's going to be a little simpler than last month's two over one class, but still uh, worthwhile. I uh, thank you. Uh, and let, let me know feedback about this video. Did I speak too fast? I, I'd like to know if this format is interesting to people, if it makes them more likely to open up my mailer uh, and, or if, if I need to find, keep the content at a more intermediate level for, for it to be interesting to you. I, I would love to hear back from you. Uh, thank you. And please, Click the links in the email or go to learnbridge.nyc and register for the classes in August. Thank you, everybody.